Good to see you tonight. What a beautiful day this is. Yes. We want to welcome all of you that are here tonight. We want to welcome all of you that are watching us online tonight. The Lord bless you. And for those of you that will be watching us later, God bless you. Thanks a lot. We appreciate you. Be sure to like and share, make comments, interact while you're there. It will help you grow and help us grow. Be sure to have a watch party. Share the Word of God. Invite Christ with people. How many of you know the world could use some hope right now? A little peace right now, a little patience right now, a little love and kindness. You know, the magicians and the warlocks could do a lot of things that Moses did before Pharaoh. <clears throat> However, let's say together, the fruit of the Spirit they cannot imitate. Go like this, love, kindness, joy, hope, peace, eternal life. Nobody can imitate that. That comes from Him. Satan's limited in power, but God is all-powerful, all-present, and all-knowing. Amen. We're glad you're here tonight. Let's come and worship. If you come to the front, be sure to distance yourselves real well. Give that chef elbow and greet one another. Bless you. Give that knuckle out there. Let's refrain from embracing real respectful one another's space. And when we can social distance, we don't have near the limitations. And we got plenty of room here. Let's spread out. Let's enjoy the Lord and enjoy worshiping together. And everybody said amen. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, and we offer our praise to you in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Come on, let's enjoy God. God bless you. Open heaven, it's an open 
Thank you for joining us today. Our heart's desire here always at Whitehorse Christian Center is to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. And as the Lord said, as he is lifted up, everyone will be drawn unto him. So welcome. The doors are open. Our hearts are open. And all are welcome to visit with us and worship with us today and celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. Just a reminder, per request of the people, times are changing. Things are different. How do we give, Pastor? Go online at whcc.net and you can give online. They make that very easy. If you have any challenges, call the office or by mail. Send a check or money order to Whitehorse Christian Center and mail it in. Also by phone, call the office. We'll be glad to take your message over the phone and thank you for your faithfulness and your contributions. Your giving makes a difference and we give unto the Lord. We ask God for wisdom and direction in handling these finances and sharing the gospel. Your giving helps us to maintain, to sustain, and to continue the ministry and the vision God has given us here at Whitehorse Christian Center. May you be blessed, and thank you. Praise the Lord. We're glad you're here tonight. Those watching online, the Lord bless you. Man, it's fun to worship God. Come on, let's say again, it's fun to worship God. Yeah. <clears throat> Usually in a room like this, almost half the people have almost died once. Hadn't it been for God, they know they wouldn't be here today. At least once. And usually half the people, a third to a half, almost died from drowning. Now, how many of you almost drowned once in your life? Raise your hand real high and go like this. See, that's at least a third, close to a half. You see, Satan is the father of all lies. He's a murderer and a thief. I want us all to say this together. I'm alive by the grace of God. 
Now, any of you that almost drowned, that were rescued, and you knew if you hadn't been rescued, you would have, you would have perished. Anybody here been rescued? Several. Lots of people. I almost drowned. Someone rescued me. Let's just raise our hands and say this with me. I almost drowned, but he rescued me. Come on. He rescued me. I'm rescued. Wow. There's nothing quite like a fresh, fresh breath of air when you haven't had it for too long a period. Just go like this. Ah, he rescued me. And we thank the Lord for our salvation. Be anxious in nothing, the Bible says. Be anxious in nothing. Let's say it together. Be anxious in nothing. Be fearful. Don't worry in anything. Don't worry about anything. Don't fear, worry. The Lord is my rescuer. Communion this Sunday, July 26. We hope you can all be here every service. Pre-packaged individuals, so we'll pass them out. There'll be people distributed around the parameter of the room. They'll have on a mask and gloves, and they'll hand it to you, and you can uh, break bread with your family or those, maybe some young people or old alike that are like family. You can break bread together. How's that sound? Awesome. Say together, awesome. Honoring our graduates, August 2nd, 2nd, 10 o'clock service. You can find the list online or out front at the information table. August 16th, we'll be welcoming new church members to our church family. Several of them. And we look forward to that time together. And everybody said, amen. Now, assist us, if you would, for services. We ask you to please don't arrive too early. So to keep things safe for all of us, Outdoors, doors will be locked until 30 minutes before service. Let's say it 30 minutes before service. And we will start on time. So let's work it being on time. Everybody said amen. amen. So Monday, Wednesday, Thursday night service start at 7. Doors will be unlocked when? 6.30. Sunday morning service begins at 8.30. What time will doors be unlocked? 8 o'clock. 6 p.m. service, Sunday night. What time doors be unlocked? 5.30. All right, let's say together. We've got it. And between sessions on Sunday morning, there's a lot of people. So we try to close at 9.30 and just reverently uh, take everything from your chairs and come on up and give and sow and pray together or come to the line for ministry or come to the altar if you'd like to pray. But take your things with you. Say together. Take your things with you. Don't leave them in your chair because as soon as we dismiss and start giving and praying, <clears throat> you have a little time to leave, but folks have to spray everything down. All right? You can leave your stuff if you want, but it's going to be disinfected. <laughs> and that will be your fault. So turn around to somebody. Remind me to carry my goods. Carry your goods up to the wheelbarrow. Uh, so we are all meeting... Uh, Group one is meeting at 8.30. Say together, group one, 8.30. And group two and three will be meeting at 10 o'clock. So we'll have more people here. We'll have plenty of room uh, to, social, to, to distance in the room. And uh, we're looking forward to two services on Sunday. All right now. Yeah, go ahead. Praise the Lord. That's, that's good. <clears throat> and, fam and parents, you're doing a great job bringing your kids and training them to be in service with you. That's awesome. That's how we grew up. That's how we raised people in church for many, many years. I wanted the kids in church with me to know who their pastors were, and I wanted to know the kids. And kids can learn and grow and minister and pray and cast out devils and lead people to Jesus at a young age just like adults. Come on now. We purposely break the service up into increments so we can keep the attention span of the children and the youth and involve them in what we're doing. Amen? They will enjoy it. They will enjoy it. And they will be able to contribute and be a great part. So thanks a lot. You're doing a good job. Turn around and tell us about it. You're doing a good job. Yeah, let's, uh, let's say this together. There are many miracles in my future. Now just sort of symbolically reach up in the spirit realm and say this. Let's say this together. People I know, part of my family, 
are going to start coming to church. People are going to get desperate and hungry for God. And they will come with us to know Jesus, to be healed, to be encouraged, to be delivered, and become part of the body of Christ. They're coming. I can see it now. I can see it now. So let's see with the eye of our faith what God is bringing into the midst of us. Don't be discouraged. Let's together. Don't be discouraged. We're moving into our leadership summit, August 5, 6, and 7. Watch online tomorrow. I think they'll probably have it posted, but I made a short little video today. Say it with me. Leaders for the long haul. And God wants to equip us for the long haul. When we entered into this season in March, I had Pastor Eric give a message shortly after they locked us all down. The government did after the 15th of March was the last time we met for, I think it was 13 weeks. I said, now, uh, Pastor Eric, I want you to minister on. He used to be a long distance runner. He came and brought a lot of ribbons and medals and trophies and things that he'd won. He had an interesting perspective. If it wasn't blue, what the other ribbons meant. And perhaps he could minister to us one day on that. But he recognized I'm running for a long distance. It's not a sprint. And so you pace yourself different. Hello? Say together. You pace yourself different. And God is preparing us for the long haul. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Be given swiftly to prayer. If you wake up worried or anxious or just a what we might call a, a prayer burden, a load to cast to the Lord and give to Him in prayer. No matter what the situation may be, let's say it together, go to prayer. Go to prayer. When you can't quite figure out what's wrong with you, <clears throat> why do I feel like this? Maybe grumpy, maybe discouraged, maybe just don't feel good, whatever. Say this with me. Go to prayer. There's tremendous opposition in the spirit realm. And we are at war. Say it together. We are at war. Now, not say it like we mean it. We are at war. If we would have lived through World War II, and my parents did, and many of you have parents that did, and some of you probably did live through it, no doubt. Some of you may have fought in it. Some of you may have lost loved ones in it. One thing's for sure, after Pearl Harbor, we didn't view war across the ocean the same anymore. War came to our house. War came to our nation. It's amazing how strategic one battle can change the outcome of a war or the outcome of a nation's boundaries. Welcome to Midway. Welcome to Midway. I want you to say this with me. We are at war, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Ephesians chapter 6. We're in a battle. Why do I feel like this? Because we're in a battle. We're in a battle. Listen to my mother, my father, my relatives, my grandma talk about World War I, World War II, some of the things they experienced how well they remember it. We need to learn from their example and transfer it into the spirit realm. Hello? Say it together. Transfer it into the spirit realm. In England, I think it was in 1938, they made millions of gas masks and everyone had a gas mask. They never knew for sure when they might be attacked. The beginning of war was postponed by the grace of God. Help them prepare for more years so they could take a stand to become victorious. This is a time of preparation in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm. Hello? I'm not forecasting a war, nor am I saying we won't ever have one. I'm talking about it's time to wake up. We are in a war. It's in the spirit realm. And we are warring against an antichrist spirit. Can I hear an amen? 
What's an Antichrist spirit? Well, it's been here since the garden, but its presence will intensify as we come closer to the Lord's return. And an Antichrist spirit is anti-Christ, anti-everything that is Christ, anti-everything that is the Word of God written and the Word of God living. So we're in a battle. But turn around and tell somebody, I read the last chapter. And we went all the way through. Say it together, we went all the way through. Not that there won't be trials, or that some may not, and some will be persecuted, and some will be martyred. But we win. Say it together, we win. The kingdom of God wins. And let's say it together, Jesus is building the church. Come on, one more time. Jesus is building the church. You're the answer. Pastor Isaac is going to come in a little bit and preach for a while, and then I'm going to close. But uh, and want to minister to the children when I close. And uh, let's say it together. Focus on the right things. Focus on the right things. Be careful what you listen to. Guard your eye gate. Guard your ear gate. Protect your soul. Be very much on guard. And I want you to say this with me. The answers for complicated situations are in God. And the answers have a simplicity. Say it together. The answers have a simplicity. Oh, the problem may be big, but his answers are not. Uh, when you walk out his answers, the Word of God, you will see miracles. My wife, noticing one day, she came home and she said, you know, this few groceries cost, I think it was $207. And family was coming over. She wasn't complaining, mind you, not at all. We were happy to buy the groceries and happy to have guests, family. Very careful right now who we have guests, right? Keep that bubble tight for a while, folks. Come on now. We're not afraid. We're just wise. <clears throat> She said, I don't know how some families are going to do this. I said, oh, I do. She said, well, how are they going to do it? I said, they're going to help feed people that don't have any food. Say it together, complex problem, but a simple answer. She said, well, you know, you're right. I said, what do we do? For years and years and years, over a decade here, where's Teresa? Remember the early days? Boy, could we all tell you some stories that have been around here 36 years. We were brothers and sisters in the Lord, raising families and children. Most of us, our parents were far away. We, we were it. We helped each other. Sometimes our families, we had groceries and another family didn't, so we would come over and share what food we had. Then someone else would get paid, and they'd invite us over, and they'd share what food they had. And we never complained or murmured. We learned to live together in, in a godly way of sharing. Acts 2. Say together, Acts 2. Luke chapter 5. You just apply biblical principles. We couldn't afford a mechanic, so those that were mechanical helped those that weren't. We couldn't afford a roof, so those that could roof helped the others that couldn't. Hello? We would gather venison, butcher it, share it. Turn around and tell somebody, leave the part that got hit. <laughs> Take the part that didn't. How are those young families going to buy all their food and take care of one another and take care of their families? Say it together. Very simple. They're going to share. Galatians 6, 7, I think it is, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man what? soweth, he shall what? Reap. So turn around and tell us about it. We're going to reap a lot of miracles. Amen. All right. Well, let's welcome Pastor Isaac as he comes tonight. Just thank the Lord for him. How's everyone doing this evening? Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Jeff has given me permission to let loose tonight. So, I'm giving you a warning beforehand. But the truth of the matter is exactly what Pastor Jeff just said. We are at war. 
And there's a call in the atmosphere that we got to respond to. How many have enjoyed the ministering of our pastors lately with the da daily bread, devotionals, video conference with apostles? Let's give, let's give a hand clap offering for the Lord, for our awesome pastors, the media team, and yourself that makes all this possible for your faithfulness, your tithes, your offerings, your prayers. Every one of us is vital in the body of Christ. Many of you work behind the scenes. Many of you work behind the scenes. Last week, Pastor Consuelo ministered on the Heavenly Father, and I had the privilege of interpreting for her. And at times it's very difficult to interpret that testimony that Pastor Consuelo shared um, the last couple of weeks has been absolutely powerful. I remember after that first one that you gave Pastor Consuelo, I just went back to my seat and I just started weeping because it was so anointed and to hear how the Holy Spirit transformed you and how he became your heavenly father. And it's just been absolutely awesome what the Lord has been doing. And then afterwards, Pastor Jeff ministered after Pastor Consuelo last week and that time was absolutely powerful as well, as Pastor Jeff always does. It, it was really anointed. And I'm giving a recap of that because as he was ministering those last minutes, the message that God put on my heart to share with you is what evolved, emerged out of that. And it's, you're the answer. So I want you to look at your neighbor and give him an elbow or just kind of wave at them and say, you're the answer. I want you to say this, put your hand on your spirit man and say, I'm the answer. Say it again, I'm the answer. I'm the answer. And tell your neighbor, your other neighbor, tell them, you're the answer. Hallelujah. I won't take too much of your time. You're the answer. Let's define what an answer is. It's a thing said, written, or done to deal with or as a reaction to a question, statement, or situation. I'm going to repeat it. An answer is a thing said, written, or done to deal with or as a reaction to a question, statement, or situation. And as we know, we, we see what we're currently facing. And our pastors describe it as challenges that we are facing. But we are not to be dismayed, for we have the answer. Amen, hermanos? Brothers? Forgive me if I, if I start preaching in, in Spanish. Two languages are going on constantly. So there are some challenges, but the news is that God is still on his throne. The news is that he's still the King of kings and Lord of lords. The news is, as Pastor Jeff was saying, we always win. Because God Almighty is with us. And you and I have been strategically placed at the post you are at now. And for those watching, God has strategically placed you where you're at now. And it's a reminder. It's interesting that Pastor Jeff asked that question today. That how many in here have had near-death experiences? And you would be surprised with all the hands you would see going up and at times the enemy would have us forget by distracting us what God has done for us but you you got to remember it's a time to reflect what God has done for you what he's what he's taking you taking you out of what he's healed you from what he's done for you what he how he's liberated how he's working in you how he has been faithful how you have received multiple healings how you have received prophetic words that are coming to pass how you have received children where the doctor said you would never have children and now you see the promise the blessing that you behold because we walk by faith and not by sight i'm going to repeat it again we walk by faith and not by sight and that's what we got to remember so you and I have been strategically designated to the position we are in we are at now Romans 5 2, the message and I'm gonna invite you to notate this I've shared this before in another sermon here at the 12 o'clock service but I really like this Romans 5 2, the message version states this 
we find ourselves standing where we always hope we might stand. I'm going to repeat it again. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand. Out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. See, sadly, many Christians are in fear right now, and we should be the example. But we got to remember that we were born, we were created for a time such as this, that God has placed us here right now to make us stand. God has made us bold and courageous. That's why he baptized us with the baptism of his Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not a decoration that you wear. It is to make you bold. It is to make you bold. It is to make you strong. When you are weak, you are strong. It is to give you an utterance of hope. It is to give you direction. The sons and daughters are guided by the Holy Spirit. How many say amen? How many are guided by the Spirit of God? It's not a time to step back. It's a time to step forward. We are to pace ourselves, as our pastors have mentioned. We pace ourselves, but it's not a time to move back. The book of Hebrews says that we are not the ones that go back in a fight. We stand firm and we go forward. The world is looking at us for answers. And I want to ignite you. I want to awaken you. And we must arise. I mean, look at King David. When he went to go fight Goliath, he ran to that battle line. He didn't drag his feet. He ran to that battle line boldly because the Spirit of God was upon him. He was anointed for that time, and there was no fear. I want you to say it with me. We were born for this moment. We were born for this moment. Ephesians 1, 5, and 6. The Passion Translation says this. This is awesome too. Ephesians 1, 5, and 6, the Passion Translation. For it was always his perfect plan to adopt us as his delightful children through our union with Jesus, the Anointed One, so that his tremendous love that cascades over us would glorify his grace for the same love he has for his beloved one, Jesus, he has for us. And this unfolding plan brings him great pleasure. So what God is doing in you, he's unfolding a masterpiece with you. And you are the answer. Zach, you are the answer. Brother Mike, you are the answer. Brother Don, you are the answer. Sister Carol, you are the answer. And every one of you, and everyone that is watching, you are the answer. That is the mindset that we must have. We must have the mind of Christ. We must put on the helmet of salvation. We must meditate on his word day and night. And the more you repeat it, and the more you declare it, and the more you read it, and the more you dig into it, you're going to believe it. You're going to walk in it. You're going to walk strong. You're going to walk strong. You're going to move those mountains. I really, it's a blessing to be here. What the pastors here have taught us, I mean, and I still have a whole bunch more to learn. But it's awesome what they teach you here, is to declare the word of God out loud. We, I mean, we complicate it so much. All you got to do is literally wake up, open up your Bible, pray in the spirit, and just walk around your house and declare the word. It's that simple. And a lot of the times the enemy wants to distract us with our mobile communications, with our phone. And I just want to be transparent here. And I want you to be blessed as well. But one thing my wife and I do, we wake up. We're very happy. We're very in love. And the Holy Spirit has been the author of all this. But the one thing that we do is we, do the, we make the main thing the main thing. And we open up the word and we declare the word out loud together. And we pray and we cry out and we intercede. We stand in the gap for you because we love you. And we won't stop crying out for you. No matter what your conduct is, our responsibility is to pray for you.
It's to cultivate the soil. It's to pray for your sons and your daughters. It's to believe for your healing. It's to believe for your miracle. It's that God would answer or cry for those that are starving. The world is starving right now and we have the answer. I don't know about you, but that agitates my spirit, man. And that should take us to a prostrate position and crying out for the Lord. We are a blessed people. And those that are watching, we love you. We are all one team. But I just want to honor God and honor our pastors and our leaders. And all the volunteers, the media team, everyone who makes this possible. Because we are a blessed people. We are blessed. And sometimes we forget what we have. But we are a blessed people. Everyone that comes here is blessed. Even those that come from other nations is blessed. And it's awesome. The, the, what, what the pastors teach us is that we would set ourselves up to be blessed. So much so that our cup would be overflowing financially speaking so we could bless others. I'm trying to get on with my message. But you are an unfolding plan before the eyes of our Heavenly Father. And this brings Him great pleasure. You are an unfolding plan before the Lord Jesus Christ. Every single one of us. It's not just your pastor. It's not just the leaders. It's not just your brethren. It's you. God wants to unfold His plan in you. And I want to remind you. What the definition of of an answer is. It is a thing said, written or done to deal with, or as a reaction to a question, statement, or situation. I'm going to repeat it again. An answer, therefore, can be considered a thing said or spoken. Are you with me? Genesis 126 and 120. Genesis 126 and 27 says, And God said... I'm going to repeat it again. And God said, I'm going to repeat it again. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27, you know it. The message says this. And remember, an answer is a thing spoken, written, Or said in the message, verse 26 to 28, it says, God spoke. Let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature, so they can be what? Responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings, He created them God like. Reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them and said prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge. It says be responsible. Again, it's talking about the responsibility. Be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air. For every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Church, I want to tell you that we have a responsibility. And it is time to arise in the name of Jesus Christ. Do not wait for the next year. Do not wait for another prophetic word. It is within you. The answer is inside of you. And it's called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's called the power of the Holy Spirit. Dunami's power of the Holy Spirit that makes a way where there is no way. That rips every mountain down. The word of God says in Psalms that he melts the mountains like wax. It's not a time, church, to spectate. It is a time to arise. And every single one of us is vital in this movement. It doesn't matter if you're Moses or Aaron or Ur or Joshua in the battlefield. All of that is irrelevant because at the end of the day, the glory is for God. At the end of the day, the souls pertain to God. And when we get to heaven and we have our crowns and we have it decorated because of all the souls that we want for the Lord, 
One day we will throw that crown at the, we will lay that crown at the feet of Jesus because everything that we have is his. Every blessing that we have is his. The success that we have is his. Who we are is because of him. Nothing is ours. I want you to say that nothing is mine. It's all his because he paid, he paid it with the high price of the blood of Jesus. He paid it with the high price of the blood of Jesus. We just deceive ourselves thinking that things are ours. But my wife is not mine. Before she is my wife, she is a daughter of the most high God. So therefore, I got to treat my wife with honor. Because if I treat her bad, I get in trouble with a man upstairs. So when you begin to understand these concepts, all clarity comes because it's very easy to love the Lord, to have this vertical axis and just love the Lord. Oh, that's almost the easy part. But the tough part is the horizontal. The tough part is when culture comes into play. Unfortunately, the tough part outside, not here, but is the color and the way we praise and the way we move but all of that we gotta just throw it out and we gotta come on board because god has brought us here for this time right here right now and there's gonna be a revival that takes place in a mighty manner because we've chosen to step on our pride and to worship the one true god and his power is gonna explode in this place when i was preparing today the Lord told me to ask you, Brother Santiago, Justin Santiago, where do you come from, brother? What state did you move from? Okay. So, southern Indiana, right next to Louisville, Kentucky. And I believe Joshua Browning is from Louisville, Kentucky. And many of you, we were to go, I mean, pastors are from Mexico. Pastor Gary's from Tennessee. I was originally from Texas and then Minnesota, parents from Mexico, and we could go on and on where you've come from. And I want to remind you today that God has brought us here with purpose, and we, was, we must remember the reason why we came here. I want to tell you something. Immigrants, Mexicans, Latinos, Hondurians, they come to the United States with the goal of achieving the American dream. But sadly, I've seen many gone astray once they begin seeing the cash flow they do not know how to handle that cash flow and then they get distracted from why they're there in the first place and a lot of them forget about the families back home and I want to tell you that God has brought you here for a particular task for a particular post and when he wants to realign you he wants to recalibrate you he wants to ensure that you're on track with him are you with me see this is what we want to do as pastors. We want to activate each and every one of you because we are at war. We need all hands on deck. But one of the main things is unity. Is unity. Because if we walk in love, we're going to love one another. Easier said than done. But a lot of the time, that's the problem. And we got to humble ourselves and just love, you. We'll love one another. That's it. Bottom line. I'm not greater than you. You're not greater than me. We're all one. We're all made in the image of God. But the Bible tells us youngsters to, for our elders, for us to show respect to them as, as he is my father. To us show respect to the women like if they're my mother. For me to respect the sister that's next to me, that is the wife of somebody else, to treat her as my sister. The enemy has distracted us. And I'm not rebuking you. I just want to want you to reflect today and be realigned today of what God has done in you and why he's called you here. The enemy would have us be distracted. I'm almost done. So the reason that I shared that God spoke us into existence. And remember, the definition of an answer is something that's spoken or written. So God spoke us into existence as an answer for this time right now. 
So now we clearly see through the word of God because this is the truth. As our pastors have been preaching, the media is junk. What's on Facebook is junk. But right here, the word of God says that if even we go through literal prison, the word of God cannot be detained and nobody can withhold the word of God. This is the truth and it's everlasting. So now I've been trying to convince you that we comply with the criteria of being an answer because God spoke us into existence as an answer to deal with any question, any statement, any situation, any problem. Oh, I want you to say it with me. I'm an answer. I'm an answer. And the more you say it, the more you believe it. Every one of us in here is an answer. There's some of you that feel discouraged right now. There's some of you that have done some sins that perhaps make you put your head down. But I want to encourage you today. I worked with my father a very long time. And in that time period, as much as I wanted to please my Lord, I myself made some dumb mistakes some bad decisions and I want to encourage you that it is time to get back up to get back up and to shake off the devil is a liar so just leave that sin you don't even want to do that sin it's just hurt it's just a void that you're trying to fill why not fill it with the love of Jesus Christ why not fill it with his love with his presence with his word Let's do that instead. As believers redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been charged with the responsibility to advance the gospel at all costs. There's a responsibility. We have a responsibility. Who will respond? Will you respond? Isaiah 6, 8 says, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? The Lord was saying, who will go for us, plural, Elohim, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Who will go for us? Who's going to represent the Father? Who's going to represent Jesus? Who's going to represent the Holy Spirit? Who will go for us? And Isaiah said, send me. It says in, in, the, passion verse, in the Passion Version, it says, then I heard the Lord saying, whom should I send to my people? Who will go to represent us? And it says that Isaiah, Isaiah, I spoke up and said, I will be the one. Send me. And it is time to speak up, church. It is time to speak up and say, I will go. Send me. My dad would crack me up, Pastor Bobby, because, oh, he was a funny man. He looked very serious, but he was a funny man. And, and he would say, Oh man, it really bugs me when I see this huge guy and he has these big muscles, veins popping out everywhere in the neck. And I mean, they're just walking like that. They could barely fit in the hallway and they go to speak and they talk like a chipmunk. <laughs> How's it going, man? And my dad would say, speak up. And it is a time to speak up. It is time to speak up like a man. It is time to speak up and say, I will go, send me. The heart qualifies you. Not your talents, not your experience, your heart. That's why David said, God never refuses, never despises a contrite spirit, a contrite heart, a broken heart. I tell people that there's one thing that Jesus Christ can't do. And that, th that, that, that statement there gets everyone's attention. And there's one thing he can't do. He can't reject a contrite heart, a contrite spirit. When you're broken before his presence, because we can't fool the Lord. He knows it all. But when we're broken, when we're convicted of sin, when we break before him, just like Isaiah was in this chapter 6. He was completely undone. When we're like that, immediately your sin is washed away. And then we make the decision to walk away from sin and walk to Jesus. Tell your neighbor, speak up. Tell your other neighbor, speak up. Send me, I will go. I will be the one. 
It's time to speak up and say, I will be the one send me. Don't be afraid. Because it's just like Pastor Jeff says, wherever I go, he goes. And wherever he goes, I go. That's what Moses said. He said, oh Lord, if you don't go, I don't want to go. But when we gave our life to Jesus Christ, we got Holy Spirit with us. He came into our life. And for some that have been baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit, you walk in a mighty power now. But now we are not alone. We are not orphans. You no longer have to be lonely. The devil is a liar. You got God Almighty. You got the love of your life with you day and night. And he's encouraging you. I want to end with this. In Matthew chapter 11 verses 1 through 3, it talks about John the Baptist and Jesus Christ the Messiah. It also speaks of this in Luke chapter 7. And I'm reading out of the Amplified Version. When John sends two disciples to question the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says in verse 1, Matthew 11, 1 through 3, Amplified. When Jesus had finished giving instruction to his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and to preach in their Galilean cities. All of the disciples except for one were Galileans. And that's another message. But you could guess who that one that was non-Galilean was. That was Judas Iscariot. All the other ones were Galileans. So Jesus Christ was preaching in their cities of, the, of his disciples. So verse 2. Now when John the Baptist in prison heard about the activities of Christ, he sent word by his disciples and asked him, Are you the expected one, the Messiah, or shall we look for someone else? Who will be the promised one? So in other words, they were asking Jesus Christ, are you the one or do we wait for someone else? And I ask you, are you the one or do we wait for someone else? Because whatever you don't do, God has a task. He has things that he wants to carry out on this, on this earth. But first he's coming to you and he wants you to complete and fulfill that call that's in your life. He's a merciful God. He's a patient God. But he's coming to you with this awesome deal. And he says, hey, I want you to be my messenger. I want you to be this man, this woman of God. I want you to represent me. And he comes to you and he invites you. What will you say? Is it you or do we wait for someone else? Because we could wait for someone else. But how many fatherless children will suffer? How many will be persecuted? If you heard the video conference that Pastor Jeff had with Ted, Apostle Ted, that under that ministry there's more than a thousand orphans. <laughs> more than a thousand orphans. And that's just a small fraction. It's just a small fraction. God has raised us up as fathers, and what are we doing? Just because this so-called pandemic has come, there, there's no reason to shut down. Jesus Christ says, go into your room, shut the door, and go to business. Go to work. Right there we could cry out. And we don't have to wear masks. And we could just be real. That we could say, consecrate me, Lord. See what God, God's going to move mightily, church. And we got to be ready for it. We can't have sin. And pastor teaches us that consecration, it's continuous. It's a process. But we got to be intentional. We got to tell the Lord, I don't want to sin no more. I don't want this bondage no more. I want to be ready for you. How many want to be ready to be used? Could you imagine I could see Asians, hundreds of Asians here. I could see hundreds of blacks here, Latinos and whites and kids and orphans. I could see so many of them. And what will you be able to give them if your hands are, are dirty? But if they're clean and you've been plowing and you've been cultivating and you've been praying and you've been reading your word, you'll be able to give them something. But how sad it would be if I have nothing to give them. It's time to no longer look at yourself. 
and look out there. Look at the kids. Look at their faces. It's time to no longer be selfish. They're waiting for us. Who will go? You have the answer because the answer lives in you. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Wow. Let's have the children come up, bring your Bibles. That was a good message. Beautiful, beautiful. Say this with me. I am the answer. Pay attention. Say it again. I am an answer. Now say this with me. I don't know what to do. Go ahead. I don't know what to do. We're the answer. We're going to go out here and people are going to have problems. And go ahead and say it with me. I don't know what to do. Here's an answer. Look at me. Say it with me. Be nice. Be kind. Be gentle. Be encouraging. Be hopeful. I don't know what to do. Say it with me. I don't know what to do. Now say this. Raise your hand. I know what to do. Be nice. Be kind to people. Be generous to people. Be helpful to people. Now go like this. Hold your hand out. And say this with me. When I give to other people, God gives to me. When I give to other people, God gives to me. Now, we're going to close in prayer here in a minute, and we're going to give you a gift. All right, look at this. I'm going to give you a gift. This is a box. doesn't look like a box, though, does it? Now, look here. Pay attention. Look up here. You're on the screen, but you need to look at me. All right? Now, look at here. This makes a box. So your parents are going to help you make a box. Hey, look here. I know whose son you are. I pastored him a long time. Yeah. On the front of this box, it says, say it with me good and loud. Food for friends. One more time. Food for friends. I don't know what to do. Say it with me. I know what to do. Be nice. Be kind. Be gentle and thoughtful of others. Now, you'll go home and make one of these with your mom and dad. And you can decorate it. Take pictures of it so I can see it. We'll put them online so other people can see it. You can paint it. You can color it. You can put sparklies on there. You can put a flower on there. You can put scriptures on there. Say it together. Food for friends. Now, we're going to practice. When we eat, we always say a prayer. So let's practice, all of us. Let's bow our head. It's on the back. Thank you, Lord, for the food. Lord, bless my pastors and help us provide food for friends. Let's all stand together. And say this with me. You're the answer. One more time. You're the answer. Let's say it together. I don't know what to do. Now let's say it together. Ready? Be kind. Be nice. Be thoughtful of others. And the Lord will what? Bless you. All right, let's thank the Lord for our kids. Let's pass these out, Pastor. Take one home, let your parents help you make it, you decorate it, and you say that little prayer every time you have a meal. Say, Mom, Dad, can I pray? For 20 years, I was gone 4,000 nights in six continents. I preached 15,000 times. I was getting on a plane in the middle of the wilderness. I would minister to two oil company presidents. They would rededicate their lives to the Lord, repent in the aisles and a loud voice in front of everybody. My last flight home the same day, headed to Chicago, 
an inventor that learned how to discover oil with a machine that makes sound. He had a multi-million dollar contract to go to Australia working for a major oil company to find oil. Uh, in the air, all three repented from horrible sin. They were all married to Christian women. Each one had a Christian wife. They had turned their back on God and lived in horrible sin. When repentance came on the airplane, they began to confess their sin in front of everybody and rededicate their lives to the Lord. Each one, when we got off the plane, called their spouse, asked me to be there. They repented and asked forgiveness. You know, when you get in a situation like that, say this with me, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. But say this with me, I don't know what to say. Put your hand right here, but out of your spirit shall flow what? Rivers of living water. The Lord gave me one word. He said, be kind. Say it with me, be kind. Be kind. In acts of kindness, people started getting saved. The smallest plane had 14 vice presidents on it from a major oil company drilling 140 oil wells in Montana and Wyoming. He made millions of dollars every year, but he didn't know the Lord. Galatians 5.22, hold your hand out. The fruit of the Spirit is love. It has many ingredients. I don't know what to do. Of course you don't. I don't know what to say. Of course not. Just be kind. Walk in the fruit of love. My wife said, I don't know how they're going to do this. I said, I do. They're going to give people food that don't have food, and every one of them will have abundance. I had no idea we were headed here together. I just want to read a few verses in closing. But you don't think you know what to do. He does. You just walk in the fruit of the Spirit and be kind. You wake up in the middle of heaviness and oppression, maybe fear attacking or anxiety, just begin to pray in the Spirit. Deuteronomy 10.18, He ensures that orphans and widows receive justice. He shows love to the foreigners living among you and gives them food and clothing. Isaiah 117, learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the cause of orphans, fight for the rights of widows. Psalm 82, 3 and 4, give justice to the poor and the orphan, uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute, rescue the poor and the helpless, deliver them from the grasp of evil people. Psalm 65, 5, father the fatherless, be a defender of widows. This is God, whose dwelling is holy. Psalm 146, 9, the Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. Exodus 22:22. 22, 22, you must not exploit a widow or an orphan. See yourself right now as Elijah in 1 Kings 17. He just gave a prophetic word. God's brought you out of a prepared place to make a difference. He prophesies to the king, and the king is trying to hunt him down. He will spend 12 months by himself with God in the wilderness. If you would have run across to Elijah, a great prophet, you could have said to him, what are you doing? Say this with me. I'm preparing. What are you preparing for? Say it with me. I'm preparing. For what? Call down fire at Mount Carmel. 
to build an altar that represents unity among all the tribes of Israel, to bring a nation to repentance, to slay the very foundation of paganism and cult, the old cult. I'm in training. Well, what are you doing? I'm sitting here by this brook, meditating on the Word of God and worshiping God and praying. All I need to drink is right here. All I need to eat, the raven brings me morning and night. What are you doing? I'm preparing. Say it with me. I'm preparing. The church is too eager to leave Cherith. The church is too eager, too impatient, too impatient to wait at the place of training and preparation. Before you can ever be successful with God, you must learn to spend time with Him, or you will never have an answer. You won't be ready. Say this with me. I know what to do. I'll be kind. And one day the brook dried up, and one day the raven didn't come back, and the Lord said, Leave and go to Zarephath. He went with nothing but what he was wearing. No money, no food, no container of water. A mantle. A mantle. And a prophetic word. Didn't seem like much when he walked into Zarephath, the hometown of witchcraft, the hometown of Jezebel. People were starving. But he believed the word of the Lord. And he walked right in. What are you doing here? Say it with me. I'm preparing. For what? Calling down fire at Mount Carmel and building an altar that's been destroyed. Standing up to a king and his entourage by myself. Well, what are you doing here? Say it with me. I'm learning be a father. I'm learning to take care of orphans and widows. Say with me, Adam, one day I'll be ready to call down fire and bring revival. What are you going to do? I'm going to be kind. I'm going to be gentle. I'm going to be loving. There is no deception in the fruit of the Spirit. There is no delusion in the fruit of the Spirit. Pastor Isaac's preaching to all of us. He's a great preacher. He's a good pastor. It's a blessing for us to have him here. But he's speaking to his own generation. Yeah, I got a choice to make, and the clock is ticking. Will you be here Sunday, Jill? Why don't you give a testimony for five minutes related to this topic and what God has put in your heart? Five minutes. And you, young lady, raise your hand. Yeah, you, yes. Five minutes related to the topic and God's speaking in your heart. Five minutes. No more. can be less. Keep it tight. We're going to close in prayer. Let's bring our wheelbarrows in, gentlemen, and set them on the corners. For those of you watching us online, thank you. God bless you. And we ask the Holy Spirit to seal these words in our heart, to light a fire within us, to prepare for Carmel by spending time with you and being kind. Wouldn't it have been something to see Elijah take a child and train him up, teach him the Word of God, minister to him out of his testimonies, Hear him teach the Bible. 
to a boy to see what love does when a son dies. Raise him from the dead. Here is your son. When he could do that, he could bring revival to a nation. He was en route to training a nation of young people. There's a desperate cry in the Spirit for those of you that are 20 to 40. How many of you are 20 to 40? There's a cry in the Spirit, a deep cry. He wants you. He needs you. Consecrated, set apart, living a holy life, fasting. Fasting with your spouse, fasting with your children crying out to God for revival. The explosions of the Spirit are coming. Let's be worthy. <laughs> Let's be worthy. Let's make our lives worth Him dying for. Let's say it together. I'm going to make my life worth Him dying for to His glory. To his glory. Oh, well, not by our own effort or works, but by his grace. Committed, dedicated. Not a rebuke, but an encouragement. God's given you an invitation. We ask you to seal these words, and all the church said, Amen. For those of you watching online, we're going to worship God in our giving. Tithe to your local church. If you want to send a gift or an offering to White Horse, you can do that. The instructions are there online. And now we will close. And you, pastors meeting with your people, those of you meeting your home with your friends, you can pray. You've heard the messages. Just pray together. Pray there by yourself if you're alone. Pray with your church family if you're with your church family. God bless you. Good night. So I'm Thank you for joining us today. You being here makes a difference. We hope 
that you have been touched and blessed deeply by the Lord and that you will go forth with the fruit of the Spirit and minister the life of Christ. Remember to like and share. Join us through the week for daily bread. We hope to see you in the near future. Thank you. God bless you.